कुमार एस पाटिल प्रोफेसर एंड हेड सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट वॉलचे इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर सो टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज एनालिसिस ऑफ आर सी सी फ्लैंज बीम्स फ्लैंज बीम्स इट इज टी बीम एंड एल बीम सो एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन लर्निंग आउटकम विल बी द लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू एनालाइज आर सी सी फ्लैंज टी आर एल बीम विथ रेफरेंस टू आई एस फोर फाइव सिक्स टू थाउजेंड प्रोविजन्स इंट्रोडक्शन एज पर आई एस फोर फाइव सिक्स टू थाउजेंड क्लास नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन ए स्लैब विच इज अज्यूम एक्ट एज ए कॉम्प्रेशन फ्लैंज ऑफ बीम दैट इज टी और एल बीम शेल सेटिस्फाई द फॉलोइंग द स्लैब शेल बी कास्ट इंटेग्रली विद द वेब ऑफ द और द वेब एंड द स्लैब शेल बी इफेक्टिवली बॉन्डेड टूगेदर इन एनी अदर मैनर एंड इफ द मेन री इन्फोर्समेंट ऑफ द स्लैब इज पैरल टू द बीम दैट इज इन केस ऑफ आइसोलेटेड बीम्स सो ट्रांसफर्स री इन्फोर्समेंट शेल बी प्रोवाइडेड एज शोन इन फिगर नंबर वन such reinforcement shall not be less than 60% of the main reinforcement at mid span so this is figure number 1 here we will find b1 both b1 beams are t beams and all b2 beams are l beams for l beams there is flange portion only on one side for t beam flange portion is there on both the sides of the beam and B3 is isolated T beam and B4 is isolated L beam in the absence of more accurate determination the effective width of the flange may be taken as the following but in no case greater than breadth of the web plus half the sum of clear distance to the adjacent beams on either side for T beam BF is equal to L0 by 6 plus BW Plus 6 df for l beam it is bf equal to l not by 12 plus bw plus 3 df for isolated t beam the effective flange width shall be obtained as below but in no case greater than the actual width for t beam bf is equal to l not divided by l not plus 4 plus bw and for l beam it is bf is equal to 0.5 l not divided by l not by b plus 4 plus bw where bf is the effective width of the slange l not is the distance between the zero moment in the beam bw is the breadth of beam breadth of web then df is thickness of flange and b is the actual width of flange note for continuous beams the frames l not may be assumed to be 0.7 times the effective span so this is a select a correct answer from the four choices given you please pause the video and just think on as per is 4562 what is the effective width of flange for l beam you just pause the video and try to see which is the correct answer the correct answer is option d that is bf is equal to l not by 12 plus bw plus 3 df strength of flanged section in flexure so moment of resist moment resisting capacity of a flange section depend upon the depth of neutral axis based on the value of depth of neutral axis x u the following three cases arises a if x u is less than or equal to df entire compressive stress is in flange and if 3 by 7 xu is greater than df compressive stress in the flange is uniform if xu is greater than df and 3 by 7 xu is less than df then compressive stress in the flange is non uniform so if xu is less than or equal to df compressive stress is in the flange so here you can find a section of a t beam so bf is effective breadth of flange which act as a beam so this is tensile steel so df is depth of flange that is depth of slab so here you will find the entire xu it is within the df xu is less than df so therefore mu is given by c into liver arm so where 
C is 0.36 FCK BF into XU. Liver arm is D minus 0.42 XU. Here you can find this is liver arm and this is a C. C is the compressive force. Then the second case, if the XU, 3 by 7 XU is greater than DF. So, 3 by 7 XU, if it is greater than DF, the compressive stress in the flange is uniform. Now, here you can see this is DF. So, DF, it is less than, uh, DF is greater than, 3, uh, 3 by 7 XU is greater than DF. So, therefore, entire compression flange is in compression. So, therefore, here MU is given by CF. CF is force taken by flange into lever arm 1 plus CW. CW is force in web into liver arm 2. So, forced in flange it is 0.446 FCK that is extreme stress into FCK that is extreme stress available. Then BF minus BW that is we have just taken it the remaining portion of the uh, flange except BW into DF because it is uniform. So, multiplied by D minus 0.5 DF that is your liver arm 1 plus 0.36 FCK B into XU. So, this is here you find it should be BW into XU, 0.36 FCK BW into XU because now we are considering only web. So, it is into D minus 0.42 XU. Next, if XU is greater than DF and 3 by 7 XU is less than DF. So, in this particular case compressive stress is non-uniform it is in, it is in the flange but it is not in not uniform so therefore in this particular case you are supposed to find out yf yf is 0.15 xu plus 0.65 df it should not be greater than df it should be less than df or it can be maximum equal to df so here you will find a non-uniform stress in the flange compressive stress in the flange so, therefore, here MU is equal to CF into LA1 plus CW into LA2. So, CF is compression force in flange. It is 0.446 FCK that is extreme fiber stress into BF that is breadth of flange into YF that is the portion of uh, flange which is stressed having compression stress. So, into D minus 0.5 YF this is liver arm 1 LA1 as shown in figure here. So, similarly plus so, CW, it is compressive force in web. It is 0.36 FCK BW into XU into D minus 0.42 XU. So, this is how you are supposed to find out the depth of neutral axis. MU for different cases of depth of neutral axis. XU less than DF. So, XU greater than DF and 3 by 7 XU is also greater than DF. And in this, to identify this particular value, you are having DF by D. If DF by D is less than 0.2, then we get case B. If DF by D is greater than 0.2, then we get case C. So, first of all, we have to equate the compressive force to tension force. So, that is C must be equal to T. So, by equating C equal to T, that is 0.446 FCK into B into XU into D minus point. Uh, that particular thing, if I equate it to 0.87 FY into AST, I will get XU. So, then I will see whether XU is less than DF. If XU is less than DF, it is case A. If it is XU is greater, greater than DF and 3 by 7 XU is also greater than DF, then it is case B. If XU is greater than uh, DF and 3 by 7 XU is less than DF, then it is case C. So, in this way, we can find out moment of resistance of the flanged sections that is T beam or L beam. The difference between T beam and L beam is so T beam is having flange on both side, L beam having only flange on only one side, on the other side it, there is no flange. So these are the references used for preparing this particular note.